My name is James Kiduru. I work with the CCP and also serve with the Scripture Union Uganda as an advisor of the regional committee in Mbale. Uh, I am here to share with you on the topic saved to serve. Salvation is free. We all know just by God's grace. We are not saved by works. But brethren, we are saved for works. Works for Christians is not a choice. It is a must. It is a lifestyle and a duty. Many times people think that we are saved and while we are saved, we can go into prayer, we can go into tongues, we can do ministry, but forgetting that surely there is the duty to serve. Not that therefore Christians do not take pride in it or demand credit for it. Remember, it is by grace that we serve. But responding to the command to serve is a human choice. That's why it is important for each individual to think about serving God. And as we serve God, we must do the works. It is important to note that our works should be done unto people. Because it is useless to say we are, we are having works when those works are not benefiting people. We are God's hands, we are his legs, we are his physical body to do the works. And therefore God recognizes those who support and help his people. Uh, we would refer to the scripture in Hebrews chapter 6 beginning from verse 7. And I want to read, Land that drinks in rain often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is a danger of being cast. In the end, it is it will be burnt even though we speak like this dear friends we are convinced of better things in our in your case the things that have to do with salvation god is not unjust he will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each one of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And that is Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 7 to 12. I want to say, friends, that in this case, God is aware that you are helping his people. And there is, the, the, you know, if you look at the Bible, the major theme in the Bible is love. But how do you show that you love God? You show that you love God by loving people. And how do you show that you love people? You love people by doing good to them. And how do you show that you are doing good to them? By helping them and supporting them. And in this scripture, we see it very clearly that if you do that, then God will not be that unfair. He will always remember that you have done good to his people and therefore you have shown love to him. Another scripture that shows that God really honors and recognizes what we do, our works, he says he will never forget, he will remember our sacrifices and accept, accept our burnt offerings. And after that, he is going to give us the desires of our heart and make all our plans succeed, just as we read in Psalm 20 verse 3 to 4. Now let us analyze uh, the scripture in Hebrews. Verse 7. By serving, 
one receives the blessings of God, as we saw. And verse 8, by being worthless, one attracts the curse and perishing. Verse 9, even when we are saved, among the many things we do, there are better things to do. These accompany salvation. Verse 10, God is fairness in regard to those who do good, and those are good works. Then verse 11, it is a call to all Christians. Verse 12, works are not for lazy Christians. Laziness is wrong, brethren. It is sin. Serving diligently with faith and patience, we inherit what has been promised. And surely that is the essence of Christianity, that eventually we should do, inherit what is promised. Now, let us look at some examples. If you remember the story of the rich younger man who came to Christ and he says, well, what can I do to inherit the kingdom of God? This younger man had all the other things done. But when it came to selling his riches to serve people, he was really uh, defeated. And you know, it calls upon us that we can do many other things. We can keep the law. But if we fail to serve the people, then we are losing the mark. Now, there is the visiting the sick, feeding the hungry, caring for those who are needed. You remember the story very well. And the other man was asking Jesus, when were you sick and I helped you? When were you hungry and I fed you? And Jesus said, when you visited those who were sick, you were visiting me. When you fed those who were hungry, you were feeding me. Friends, when we care for those who are in need, God recognizes it. It is as if we are actually caring for God. It is as if we are feeding God who is hungry. Surely God can't be hungry. But when the people are hungry, it is our obligation as Christians to feed them. By the way, you may not know how hospitals came to be. It is this that made hospitals to be. The Christians of the early times realized the need to care for the sick. And because the sick were scattered, they devised a means of putting them together so that they can care for them in a more economical way, which is cost-effective. Eventually, it became necessary to bring all of them together so that Christians can do the ministry unto them. And as they did, that's when the hospitals began, because now there were many. Now they started dividing them according to sicknesses. Those who were coughing were now categorized in two and put in one chamber. And that's the beginning of hospitals, just because the Christians chose to care for the sick following the scripture in the Bible. So I want to say, friends, that let us be there. But these are challenges I want to bring to you. What have we done as individuals? Because working as institutions has been difficult. But in the short time, what have we done as individuals to help and support the needed during these tough times of COVID lockdown? What are we planning to do to support the vulnerable? At least today and thereafter. And I want to conclude by saying, we are not saved by wax, yes, but for wax, and that one we should take it. And then these wax should be in the favor of people, especially the vulnerable. That's what accompanies and complements salvation as we live as Christians, as we, re we read in the Hebrews above. It also attracts people to God which, as it were, should be followed by discipleship nurture. When they come, after that, as Christians, we should nurture them so that they mature up as Christians who will serve God and who will inherit the kingdom and benefit from the, promised, the promises that are put in the Bible. Thank you so much. <music>